guys, you literally won't believe it. I've had to do it again. We've had to get on with the New York bagels because I went into Tesco and there just was not enough bagels to justify me not getting any and then having to go back the day after. So I picked up these. I actually did, this is the thing, right? Get this. I actually did pick up Warburton's bagels. There was one last pack of these left. So I picked them up. However, what we've got to take on board here is these go out of date before these. Now, I eat four bagels a day. So realistically speaking, I would get them done prior to any of them going out of date. However, I just hate the fact of eating something that goes out of date before something that goes out of date later. And let me know if any of you guys are like that. However, these go out of date the day after these. So these are gonna eat second, so they can just remain in there. And these are gonna eat them first. So now I've got to slice these for meal number one, which much to my disgust, they also toast absolutely horrendous. Um, don't get me wrong, they, they taste okay, but they toast horrendous and you've got to go through the effort of cutting them in half. You guys know already meal number one and to be fair i'm that inexperienced with new york bagels that i've actually done this the wrong way around so i've actually put the bottom on the top and the top that's meant to be that right there that actually looks relatively aesthetically pleasing on the bottom now i've got anxiety problems because i would like to twist it over but then i don't think i can eat the egg at the bottom and the turkey rashers at the top i need the turkey rashers at the bottom and the egg at the top however we're gonna wash this down with a lovely little pink ultra monster rosa because of course that is top tier and just because we cannot get access to the original red flavor anymore the pink is sitting at the top but regardless guys today is actually chest day now today's chest day but i've i feel as if i've brought too many chest sessions to the channel because the past three videos maybe have been chest sessions so we're not going to bring chest i do actually have back tomorrow so i'm going to carry this video into tomorrow i'm going to bring you guys my midweek back session so not my deadlift session, my block pull session, which do obviously happen at the end of the session. But regardless, this is going to be a pretty random vlog. I've done my morning check-ins, I've done my morning work. I've got two blocks of work, so I do um, a more so AM block and a PM block. So realistically speaking, I more so get all my check-ins out of the way in the morning. Then the responses obviously throughout the day, replies throughout the day, I get all that done. But again, there's not too much happening throughout today as a whole. I will need to get my hair cut tomorrow because obviously I get it cut every single Wednesday. But yeah, it's going to be pretty random. I hope you guys do enjoy it. If you do, do not forget to drop the video a like for me. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let's get on with this day. I genuinely cannot believe that I've done that. Oh my God. Still tastes 14 out of 10. So it's been like a religious thing that I've done since prep. Every time I have my meal, number one, I sit down and watch YouTube and there's usually something that I can kind of go through for, say, maybe upwards of a couple of weeks. So maybe a series or something that I've just started watching on YouTube and this has definitely been um, the thing that I've started watching recently. And it's this guy literally turns up at expos. So like, for example, the Olympia Expo, Arnold Expos, and he literally just calls people out on what they weigh um, and what their height is and then he literally gets um, the scales out and he gets a uh, measuring tape out, takes their height, takes their weight and honestly some of the people, like essentially what he's looking for is car and reactions. So there's been a couple of people like Smith Julie and, and I can't even remember what the other guy was. Um, a couple of actual famous wrestlers as well that's kind of went absolutely berserker and just because of him getting the, the scales out and obviously um, because there's been a couple of people lying I think that's why they've went mental but this has most definitely been something that's been my entertainment for meal number one so if anybody's not watched this guy yet I'll, I'll put what his name is up on the screen I can't actually say it I can't pronounce it um, but shoot over and obviously watch his videos because some of them are absolutely hilarious so meal number two going in here or what I like to maybe call meal number one plus a little snack because it genuinely is just cereal but We've got 200 grams of Weetabix minis in here, so that's going to go in right now. I'll then go on with my block number two of work, and then pretty much what it'll be is pre-workout meal. Then it'll be time to go to the gym, but actually tomorrow, obviously I'm going to take it into my midweek back session, which I actually do train after this meal. So technically, I might not take you to my third meal, I might just take you to the gym after here, because I am obviously going in from a midweek back, which I do train earlier on during the day, around 2pm, so I like to get in um, a couple of meals, 
prior to that. To me, that's actually perfect. Um, obviously, I know a lot of you guys start eating very, very, very early in the day. However, I don't like to start eating until around 11 a.m. Um, just because I'm around five, six months into my off season now and my appetite is still through the roof. And I don't want to get to like 8, 9 p.m. at night and be absolutely starving to the point where I just want to binge. So I want to make sure that I have got enough food for later on at night that I'm not getting to the point where I've got to go off plan. I've got to eat so many more calories and then I just feel terrible because of it. So meal number two, we'll then make up some supplements and then we'll go to the gym. Right guys, pre-workout supplements here. So I've got my Trainsmart in here. I've got my Intra in here. We've got Rhydon going in first of all with my Trainsmart, which of course is just this right here from Unrivaled Nutrition. We also then move on to my Intra, which I've got level up like I've said to you already so all these three supplements are in this one right here so level up we've got no code and we've got three big fat scoops of carb up so that's my intracarbohydrates that's my essential amino acids this is a performance based supplement six ride on capsules right here which is my pump formula so as you can see all of that's from HR labs and Finally, we've got Train Smart for my pre-workout supplement of choice over DFib tonight. And again, you can catch this over at unrivalednutrition.co.uk and of course, all of this over at HR Labs, which as you know already guys, my personal discount code is just kiffy 15 which can grab you a nice bit of discount and of course, it supports me a lot. So anybody that uses my code, very much appreciated. Now, let's go and hit some back. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up right here by going over a topic that I, I receive a lot of questions about and it's definitely something that I've received a lot of questions about for 
a number amount of years. And I actually do think I've covered this, to be fair. I do think I've, I've went over this, but I'm going to kind of cover everything in depth as much as I can. But I'm going to try and keep it as, as quick as possible. So training, my approach to training, how I um, approach things like sets, rep ranges, intensifiers, intensity in general, um, the weights that I lift, what I do whenever I go into the gym the approach that I take that's maybe not the same as what everybody else does. Now, we always know that there's things like pyramid sets, there's top and back off sets, which is the one that pretty much every modern day bodybuilder uses right now. Um, we can go in and we can do, say, straight sets. I go in, as you guys know, I, I go by how I feel. Um, that's always been the way since the very start, nine years ago now, I've always went in by how I feel. I've never logbooked in my life. I can always remember in the back of my mind or for example, Instagram, I do fill in the majority of my top end sets or heavier sets, I should say anyway, because I don't like to use the, the, the phrase top sets and back off sets because that's not really my approach and what I do. I fill in the majority of my stuff for Instagram and with that being said, you could more or less say Instagram's my logbook, but with that, on top of um, things like back off sets, etc., that I do fill in, I more or less just always keep them heavier sets. So for example, all the compound movements, they're really the ones that I only track. I only make sure that I remember what I've done. Um, I know that I've done all time PRs on them and that's really the ones that I'm always wanting to look to progress on. I'm not really ever looking to progress on something like a side lateral or a cable single arm bicep curl. Don't get me wrong, I'll always show up on them days. I'll always train as hard as I can. I'll always lift as heavy as I can on them given days. But that pretty much goes for absolutely every single session. I'm always going in and, for example, I might have some sets in my head that if I've seen it already, I will absolutely go into them sessions and I will do that. But for the majority of the time, especially about things like competition prep and that, when I'm in the position of performance being the biggest goal, for me anyway, that is everything. I'm not ever chasing silly big loads unless I'm peak off season peak all-time strengths and I've got some, some silly numbers in my head that I'm wanting to really work towards, then yes, I will work towards them. However, I'm all about going by how I feel. So I'll get the big compound movements out of the way, which, like I've said already, I'll remember them ones, I'll track them ones, I'll always look to beat them ones. If I can do more in a specific rep range, and that could be a different um, range of rep ranges from, say, for example, even four to six, you could go six to nine, or you could go 10 to 15. Again, I'm always going by how I feel, but I will always look to progress them, take them as far as I can. Like right now, I'm working at all time strengths on things like my pressing, which is massive for me because I've never ever, I've never once looked at my pressing as a, a strength for me, but it is moving up. But for everything else, for example, on something like a deadlift, I'm going by how I feel. On that given day, I will lift as heavy as I possibly can for as many reps as I can. And again, I'll give myself a specific rep range. I'll monitor how I am throughout warm-ups. Same goes for things like on legs. See whatever I'm doing in terms of a squat variation or um, a pattern such as maybe a leg press or any sort of leg press that I might be using on that given day. I'm going by how I feel. I'll warm up, I'll then take a couple of good working sets, more or less work with um, a couple of sets, but what I've been doing recently is actually doing a top end set, so a heavier set on my press and movements. So say for example, six to nine reps, I'll then go up in weight again from that. So for example, yesterday I went in and done shallow incline on the Smith machine. I worked up to 3.75 plates aside for a set of six to nine reps. I took six reps and then what I done was I went up to four plates aside. So that is only um, the equivalent of 10 kilograms up, but still I went up in weight afterwards took three reps, my goal was to take anywhere from one to three reps just to get the feeder off that brand new weight. Then, backed off from there, so I essentially brung back to a down set and the goal was three plates aside, which is a major drop off from, um, from four plates, which felt super easy. So that allowed me to progress in that rep range, perform it with perfect execution and make sure that I can still continue to get stronger on them bigger movements. Now, that's what it's all about. It's chasing progression, chasing performance, but never chasing load. Because the second you start chasing load, you get into that nitty gritty hole of just sacrificing everything out the window. When you think about it, we are bodybuilders, we have to take on board. The execution, yes, is important. We need to stimulate the muscle as always, but we're not focusing on just moving weight from A to B. We're focusing on making sure that we're training with a purpose. So execution is always at the front of the list. Um, so we always want to make sure that we are earning them progressions, but that's why we always should focus on performance over anything, because as long as your performance is perfect, you will progress, you will you will see yourself moving up the weight and you'll naturally get stronger, you'll naturally lift more loads, you'll naturally fall into that position of consistently showing up and be able to do things that you've never done before and that is, that's how I'm able to train all the time. I'm not going in um, at 110% balls to the wall absolutely every single day with a logbook of these numbers that I have to beat. I'm going in 
110% every single day, balls to the wall, but from how I feel. Um, now don't get me wrong, I'm going into the gym the majority of the time, I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. But I can go in this week and I could lift 10, 15, 20 kilograms heavier than what I'm going to lift next week. It just totally depends on how I feel. Um, this has been the way that I've done it since the very start. Don't get me wrong, I'm experienced enough now to be able to go in and do that. Um, a way back at the start, maybe the first kind of two or three years, maybe wasn't as beneficial as what it is right now. Um, but if anything, again guys, being a coach myself, I always recommend to my clients that they do log, they do track, because not everybody's experienced to be able to do this. But as you do gradually get more experience over the course of the years in your training, you can move towards not utilizing a logbook every single session or not using a logbook at all. Because at the end of the day, sometimes that can drive you into detrimental effects towards things like execution, your mindset, um, your mental health in general, because you can really let that beat you up if you go into the gym with all these numbers um, in this book in front of you and, and you don't beat them. It's not the nicest thing on the planet. I've seen people allow it dictate their weeks, um, dictate their, their mindset towards just training in general and unfortunately that's not the nicest thing on the planet. So um, we're going to just conclude this one here guys but as you guys know already I go by feel. Um, I go in, obviously I give my everything and I go 110% balls to the wall all the time. It's the way I've always trained but we just don't track, we don't log. Um, we film our sets for Instagram and then we just get on with things. But as always guys, any other questions regarding this topic, drop them down below. I will get back to absolutely anybody that does have any questions about it. Um, as always, I do hope you have enjoyed this one. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to drop the video a like for me, subscribe to the channel if you are new and I'll see you all in the next video.